Run it up, then run it back. Run it up, then run it back. Run it up. Good morning. It is Tuesday here at FanDuel TV, and this is Run It Back, a show about hoops, all the hoops. What are you, what are you laughing about? Uh, so we don't talk about hoops at all until right now. Yeah, we don't. Every well, day. we were trying to figure out if the lotto is real or not. That was the big topic of discussion it's this not. morning. And it's not. Uh, Lou Chandler, Michelle Shams joining us. There he is. Wow, now you're you're like a day into your, what is it, 30th yeah. year? Oof, how does it feel? Now I'm really old. Now I, You know, someone told me today, we're all... As young as we're ever gonna be, and we're as old as we're ever gonna be. So that's my motto for like oh, the rest of my life. Some, I heard that yesterday. Wise, wise words. <laughs> it is well said. <laughs> Great, Chandler's impressed. I'm gonna use uh, that later. <laughs> we are uh, we are gonna start with some hoops, but we're gonna take a turn today because uh, the one thing everyone can agree on is we were all watching the women play last night, and boy was it fun. It lived up to it. Ooh. LSU, Iowa. It was the big rematch. Would things be smooth? Um, they were, but Caitlin Clark. If you had doubts about who she is, she had 41 points on the night, mm. you guys, and it was quite fun to watch. Um, and most anticipated game, not just in women's, I'd say across the board. Like, I don't care about any of the men's games as much as I did about last night. What did you think about her performance? Uh, this was unbelievable, and I'm ashamed to say this is the first time I've ever watched. I set an alarm. Uh, I wouldn't say that. I've set, I'm saying, I've <laughs> yeah, set he's going to say it. I set an alarm to watch it. this game. I was oh, so excited to watch it. this game. And it was unbelievable. First Amazing. of all, the way both of them play, the way uh, Caitlin Clark can shoot the ball, can pass the ball, the way she sees cutters back door, and then on the other side, Angel Reese, the way she dominates inside and, and block shots. It was one of the most exciting games I've ever watched, <laughs> and it was so much fun. I think it's great for their game. It's great for the sport. And they've single-handedly put this sport on the map, yeah. and it, it, it's awesome to watch, and it's I'm, I'm excited for the Final Four, and I can't wait to see the future of this sport because, man, it's di it's different watching her. She gives me the same feeling. I said this before. She gives me that Steph Curry feeling when I'm watching her. Like half she's court. Just, she's <laughs> dropping no looks. She's throwing full-court passes. She's shooting from 35 feet. It really is fun to watch. Did you watch? Oh, you were at Universal. Did you get to see any? Yeah, we uh, we were on our phones. Nice. You know, yeah, we, had, we were on our phones. I was with my daughter, and she was really locked in. But it, it's um, to piggyback off of what Chandler said, to be a part of women's basketball, coach women's basketball, it's a great time to be a fan of these young ladies, you know, from the from the Juju Watkins, from the Angel Reese's, to the Flaw Jays, the Kaitlyn Clarks, the Paige Beckers, Audie Crooks. I mean. Uh, Cameron Brink. It's so many different women that are making a name in the college basketball world. It's going to make the game so much stronger for young ladies that's coming up. So it's exciting to see the excitement around the women's basketball game. And you know what? I'll say this. D Haley Van Leith Haley Van and Leith. Angel yeah. Reese, they're getting so much hate on social media, and it's crazy because that's when you know you 99 percent of these people that are talking <laughs> shit about these girls have never played at this level of competition, have never competed, have never put a sport on the map like these girls are doing. So. I hope they're watching this because they don't deserve that. This is great what they're doing and it's so much fun and so exciting. So do not change and continue to no, do it because you are I, changing the game right before our eyes. I love it though because it's a rite of passage. Yeah, I, think about think about how much trash and shit talking that goes on in a men's game. Mm -hmm. After every single game, you can go on X or Twitter or whatever you want to call it and there's trending topics of people talking <laughs> trash about the game. If the people are talking trash about basketball and, they're, and it's basketball-related trash talk, you are okay. a part of the game. So congratulations, ladies. Y'all are doing an amazing job of being a part of it. And I, I look forward to more trash talk. I, mm -hmm. I love it. I wonder, because you just, you just rattled off a list of names. Can you do the same for the men's game? <laughs> Absolutely not. I right, can't. Like right now, I, I can't. I, DJ ah. Burns. I mean, I can, but it's it's Zach it's Eady. it's crazy. The that's what I'm saying. Like the level that Caitlin Clark is, she's in a league of her own. You're seeing her now, which she it's all deserving. She's in the State Farm commercial. She's yeah. on national ads. She's getting offered these five million dollar offers. Who knows if that's that real or not? not real. But uh, it's it's she's become such a household <laughs> name because she's so exciting to watch and it's different. And she's in a league of her own. Now, I don't think we should make it a competition with the guys and girls and something like that. But I think it's both. It's it's great for both of them. And March Madness. In general, it's really cool that UConn, both teams are going to the That's final crazy. four. NC State, both teams are going to the final four. It's just awesome and it's great for both sports. I think the difference between the women's game and the men's game, 
the men's game, you can go G League, you can go one and out, you can be one and done, you can go overseas, you have all these different outlets. On the women's side, you yeah. watch them from freshmen to seniors because of they, they can't leave until after their third year. Yeah. You actually watch the growth. You watch a star is born. Like imagine if Kaylin Clark leaves after her freshman year. We don't get all of these moments. And she has an opportunity True. to she has an opportunity to go get all of these records and we can watch her build <clears throat> and we can watch these rivalries be born as well. You know, we had an opportunity to see LSU versus Iowa in a rematch where it went mm -hmm. Iowa's way. You know, so the women's game, they have it figured out. Salute to them in the college world. The men's, we still got some work to do as far as um, infrastructure. I know the NIL is throwing things off yeah. a little bit um, on the men's side, but on the women's side, it looks like they got it figured out. And even going back to last year with the Angel Reese going, I, I love I'm that. I'm good with that. Oh, I love that's it. That's part of the game. That is the theater. If someone did that in men's college hoops or someone did it in the NBA, we would love we celebrate them. it. We would praise Absolutely. it. So why is she getting shit on for doing that when it's just part of the game and then afterwards you see them chopping up and it's all love and respect? So, yeah, they're competitors. Uh, and they, they've created storylines. Yeah. They've created it's, excitement around games. It's creating a buzz and an audience that they've never had before, which is awesome. And it's okay to be a quote unquote villain in certain regards. Because people are going to like you or they're not. And Absolutely. that's their own personal issue. And yeah. it is what it is. But uh, Shams, you know, with the Steph Sabrina thing during the All Star weekend arguably was a highlight of the entire uh, event. Are we going to get more of that? Seeing how hype and how hot this women's game is right now? At this point, Stephen Curry versus Sabrina Ionescu is very likely for next year. And next year's All Star weekend, guys, it's going to be in the Bay Area in San Francisco at Chase Center in 2025. And I'm told with Caitlin Clark and potentially Klay Thompson to make it 2v2, Stephen Curry, Klay Thompson is Splash Brother. I'm told St Steph Curry is specifically brought up uh, potentially having Klay Thompson in this competition for next year. Could, it, could a guy like Damian Lillard be a candidate as well to join Steph Curry? But those two guys potentially against Sabrina Ionescu and Caitlin Clark, those are all conversations that are going to continue to go on in the coming uh, months and as we get into uh, the 24-25 season. I'm curious from Chandler and Luke's perspective and also you, Michelle, like who would you want to see uh, with Steph Curry? Does that mean and do warrior? you think it should definitely be <laughs> Sabrina Nescu and Yeah, Kevin it's Clark. a little dicey if Clay's not Is on Clay the Warriors. a warrior? Um, I mean, no, that, those would be the two I'd want to see. And yeah. even Sabrina, think about this year how she lost, but she was unbelievable. Like, she beats 99% of the guys that she shoots against this year, not named Steph Curry. So <laughs> I think looking back to All-Star Weekend, that was my favorite event. So, yeah, I would love to see it more. The girl from USC, she's a freshman. She can't leave, but she's... Juju? Juju. Yeah. She's nasty. Like, she's fun to watch. But she's only a freshman. That's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. So, yeah, I would love to see this. The Clay and Steph thing would make sense with these two girls. Um, but, yeah, it was my favorite part of All-Star Weekend last Same. year. I wouldn't mind it. I, I wouldn't mind it to see a lot of these young ladies involved. And, and if the NBA and the WNBA can figure out a way to infuse more, even they can do the skills competitions. You know, it, yeah. even in years past, you've seen WNBA players do um, the skills competition where it was a. Oh, they did a, teams. A, it was, yeah. right, teams. There was a, a legend involved. Yep. Um, a young lady from the WNBA and, and a current player from the NBA that represented yeah. um, right. organizations. I did it. Yeah. I did it in Houston. You it was did? like me, Kenny Smith, and. Witherspoon, I think. There you really? Go. Or, yeah, someone. Right. Teresa Witherspoon. Or, yeah, something like that, yeah. There you go. It was fun. Like, like really she would memory. do the passing, I would, do, you know, and then you'd kind of alternate. This would be really... Yeah, this is good. I, I think Steph and Sabrina, they did a great job of, of introducing it, and it should only grow from there. I love this for us. This is going to be exciting. Um, we did get some NBA hoops last night. Obviously took a back seat. Uh, but Suns Pelicans, goodness gracious, Booker. 52, Suns win, 124-111. Oh, uh, Pelicans now with the one-game lead over the Suns. That's interesting, by the way. Nurkic finished with 19 and 19 rebounds. Zion had his 30 points. Uh, but the 52 from Devin Booker, third straight 50-point performance against this Pelican squad. I, I, I've asked this, and I, I wish I could understand the science behind it more. But there are just some teams that do what? Bring something out in you? Or is there a matchup issue? What is this? Well, this is, he said after the game, this is the closest, you know, arena to his hometown. So he has 40 mm. plus people there. So that might play a factor in his family seeing him play live in person. They don't get to see that. But also Willie Green is saying that this is embarrassing. <laughs> they, they defended him soft. There's no way someone can get 50. And 
Lou knows, if someone has a game on you, the previous game, and they give you 40, 50, 60 points. We're trying you again. You are watching so much film. Right? You are making adjustments. You are fouling him, double teaming him, throwing the kitchen sink at him. So the fact that he's done it three times in a row, is one of the crazier stats that I've ever seen. And then seen. being in New Orleans probably doesn't matter because I'm sure one of three of these games were in Phoenix. So it's he, a, yeah, no, exactly. Yeah, yeah, he just he likes the Pelicans. Pelicans. If a team allows you to get a rhythm, you can't wait to play them again. That's one of the games you're gonna circle on the calendar, and it looked like that's what he's doing against New Orleans. But how did they don't they don't want to throw a double team? They don't yeah, want to trap them. They don't you're gonna them. leave Kevin Durant open. Yes. Yeah. And I mean, you're gonna try. This guy's to only pays for that. another 50 ball. Yeah. I'm not letting him I get think, 50 again. Yeah. I mean, look three, at that. Three fifties is incredible, but at the end of the day, that's Dude. the point of this Phoenix Suns team. You have to guard them honestly because they got two more guys that can give you the same exact 50 that Devin Booker has, and so it, it creates matchup problems for them. So. But it feels like they're not. I mean, 52 points is 52 points. Like. Yeah. I would try to just, I don't know. It just feels like why I'm why taking him, the ball out of his hands if he's he cooking right. like that. And, and, but again, you're, you're going to take it, take it from his hands, yeah. and you're going to put it in another guy's hands that can literally do the exact same thing. But I'm taking yeah. my chances to see what happens, because three in a row is three in but a row. But I don't think that's really, like once you're out on the floor, it's, it's, not, not, even, it's not even a thing. Do they play again this year? Where, because I need to see the next contest. They do play again this year. <laughs> yeah, and it's going to be 450. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> if it's another, fi I mean. And there's no chance. Because if Willie Green is specifically bringing it up. We probably said that after the second 50. We probably did, actually. Yeah, because you know when you get your ass busted, that film, it's humbling. You watch it, you <laughs> can't. The, 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 the tape never lies. <laughs> there he goes again, and there he goes again. So does it, is there something they should be, should they be running their offense through him more often, or is this a specific Pelicans issue with Booker? Well, this is the luxury of their team that Lou's talk about. Who, 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 who are you going to stop? Are you going to give, you're going to yeah. double team him, then Kevin Durant goes nuts. You're going to double team him, then Bradley Beal can go and get 50. No one's even talking about Nurkic at 19 and 19 last night. Grayson Allen's having a career year this year yeah, from yeah. three, so they have so many weapons that it's impossible just to, okay, let's stop Devin Booker today. Let's, <laughs> you know, let's take the ball out of Bradley Beal's hands. He's been the most inconsistent of the big three, Bradley Beal but he's been dealing with a bunch of injuries and he's going to figure it out. But yeah, with, with this kind of offensive firepower, it, it, there's no right answer. You just got to hope they're off and make it I'm, difficult on them. I'm going to take an educated guess and say their game plan was probably to stop Kevin Durant. Well, they, yeah. Because when you, when you game plan for teams, the point is to, to stop something. We're going to take something away. Kevin Durant is the best player on that team. They probably said, Listen, tonight we're game planning for Kevin Durant. Take one. Yeah, we're going to take things away, and Devin Booker took full advantage of it. Well, it ruined my prop party um, contribution. Oh, I actually had um, Sons yeah. and uh, Zion <laughs> over. Yeah, mine was trash, too. Bing, 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 bing. what's up? <laughs> <laughs> trying to figure out how to fix it. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to figure out one thing. Well, the Suns' inconsistencies, like, they play Denver so well. Mm. They have a big win on the road there. They have a big Super win on the road in New Orleans. They needed that one. Thank but then in the middle, you have losses to San Antonio. Yeah. Without Victor Romaniama, you have a loss against Oklahoma City. Without Shea, like, what, what, like, why? I, I don't understand why? the inconsistencies. Is it just not waking up for those teams? I mean, Lou Chandler, you guys That's have been in those, those battles. Like, what is it? I mean, honestly, the season's so long, you're, you're not going to be perfect, right? You're going to have bad games. You're going to have teams that just can't miss against you that night. You're going to have blown coverages. You're going to have off nights. And I feel like this team, with their talent, with their roster, they should have less of those and they don't and they've had Bradley Beal in and out of the lineup which has hurt because we've been waiting for this big three all season long we've barely got a little taste of it um, but then again this is a team why the games like last night why when they go and destroy the Nuggets uh, on the road this is why they are that scary team because we've seen them do it before we always talk about it. we haven't seen Oklahoma City do it in the playoffs we haven't seen Minnesota do it True. we've seen these guys do it we've seen these guys play on biggest stage we've seen these guys make multiple all-stars in all NBA teams so they have have the resume which gives us more comfort you know to when we make our picks on why but it is it is it's crazy because this is a team that is deep this is a team that has you know good bigs this is a team that can be very good defensively so they should be in a lot better position than they are and we and again we talked about it yesterday with OKC confidence and uh, chemistry right even though on paper this should be a team that's dominating the NBA and dominating the Western Conference, this is their first year together. You know, when you add in a Bradley Beal and, and Kevin Durant coming over last year, 
this is going to be something that's going to take time. Obviously, we're going to be a little bit more impatient because of the amount of talent that they have, and we think that they should just come in and dominate. But think about the teams that's been building for years now. OKC has been putting that team together. Denver has been putting that team together. You know, the Boston yeah. Celtics on the East, that's been a team that's been consistently together, and you're starting to see the fruits of that. And so maybe we should be a little bit more patient with this Phoenix Suns team, but, you know, they're in a position right now with so much talent, it, they're forced to be a part of the championship or bus uh, crew of teams. The problem is, like, like in Brooklyn, when the, that big three got together, it's like we're waiting, we're, we're waiting, we're waiting, and then all of a sudden they're not and together. And then they're, they're so like with yeah. a team like this, it's like they're all in their prime or past their prime. How patient can we be? Because we only have a small window of how these three could be playing together. So hopefully they continue to play. Hopefully there's no moves this offseason because this team has the potential to be very, very good. I mean, new ownership seems like a patient dude. Like he's in it for the long haul. I don't know if the players, I guess we're looking at the players at that point. Do you want to be moving around? Yeah. The, the the scheduling gods play a big part in these final seven, eight games that we're, we're doing down the stretch here. Uh, the Suns right now, 44-31. We talked about seventh. They're a game back. Um... Do you think they have enough? And by the way, their schedule is the Pelicans, the Cavs, the T-Wolves twice, the Clippers twice, Good Lord. then the Kings. I know they got one of the, the tougher endings to their season, but do they have enough to, to push forward into that sixth spot? I think, I think they stay put. I just hadn't seen the consistency that, that I would like to see this team have to say that they're, they're going to go out with, with the strength of schedule that they have left and they're going to go and get that sixth spot, you know, when the Pels have been doing their thing. Uh, consistently, so I, I say they stay put right there. But I don't think the I don't think the play in is going to be, um, is it is going to be a challenge. But them to, for them to win one game, I think they'll be fine. Well, it's interesting if they make the play in, they'd rather the eight seed than the seven seed, so they can play Oklahoma instead of Denver in that first round. So that would also be a little. Yeah tweak there but the only thing they have on their their side right now is health sacramento kings we talked about them yesterday yeah. monk out herder out so you think they'd have a little slippage and then with the pelicans brandon ingram he's still out so those are two teams that they are chasing that do have some health issues but like you just said their schedule is not very it's favorable for them down the stretch and but those are the teams it's good it's a good test that they get that type of strength of schedule right before the postseason so that should help them but i think they're not worried i think they i think they think like i do that they can beat anybody in a series so who cares they'd rather not play the nuggets but at the end of the day i think they'd rather i just would like to see it i want to be entertained we're going to be at That would be an epic first-round series, Denver-Phoenix. Uh, they brought up Brandon Ingram, Shams. Um, the team is about 500, basically, since he went out. Any shot of getting him back for the postseason? That's the hope. That's what the Pelicans are hoping for. Uh, Brandon Ingram is going to be reevaluated at the end of the week. Uh, that'll be the two-week mark. And the hope is by that three-week mark next week, he's going to be back in the lineup. Uh, but with the bone bruise, you have to be careful. And also, this is, a, this is a Pelicans team that wants him right for the playoffs, for the playing tournament. But, it, I mean, I, just looking at the standings there, like, we're going to see a lot of movement this next couple weeks. It's going to be fun. Tiebreakers, tie I feel like, are more important yeah. this year than yeah. any other year. We have to actually remember them all at this point. Shams, love you, mean it. Um, we will see you tomorrow when we come back from your Charlotte Hornets. And former Spur, Davis Bertans joins the show. Great beard. Great. Great beard. And so many books. What's happening? I don't is I don't think he's where he is. <laughs> <laughs>
And I would say, I'm not going to say it's the best nickname in the league, but I would say one of the, the top ten probably if it would go through. Shut up, Bill. There you go. Davis, I, I'm reading this for the first time here. Is it true you only have four and a half Us. fingers on your shooting hand? Whoa! Uh, how? First of all, I need a backstory on that, and how the hell are you still such a great shooter with, uh, you know, that situation on your hand? Wow! Well, the the, the very short version is uh, I was like 12, 13 years old. Uh, grandfather needed wood for heating. Uh, and his, but we come from a really small town, like 3,000 people. Like, like everybody knows everybody by their first name. And uh, yeah, needed heating. And uh, it was me, my brother, and my dad were cutting wood. And uh, unfortunately, and the short story is just I ended up on the wrong end and uh, it started <laughs> raining, started rushing, and it kind of got on there. But I still, like, even though, you know, it's a little bit of a lucky situation. Uh, I was lucky that I didn't lose also the middle finger because I cut a nail nail off of that as well, that one as well. Wow! Is that the fi is that the finger for a wedding band? That's smart. Well done. No. Uh, well. Oh no, it's the other uh, hand. I wear it on. Wait, oh, you, know, you okay? You did it right. Had you, you right. played basketball yet before this happened? And you 13? had to like. So you did you have to like uh, yeah. adjust how yeah, you I were was shooting? Me, me and my brother were basically born in a basketball gym. So <laughs> wow. I was playing the basketball since I remember myself. So. You know, at that point, my dad was the one that was like, since he played and coached and did all of that, like he was the one all basketball is over. You know, I was like, I didn't even think about it. Wow. That's and crazy. then, Dad, calm down. That's yeah. crazy. But then at, at the end, it takes about as much as a broken finger, so it's not that bad. Yeah. Could be worse. I suppose. Uh, you um, you started this season with OKC before being traded at the deadline over to Charlotte. Um, what was it like building with those young guys? And did you see the potential of this team um, possibly being uh, who they are now? Uh, definitely. You know, coming in, didn't really know much to expect. You know, a young team, uh, you know, during the season, they didn't really win much before uh, we get traded. We haven't done much of winning since the trade as well, but I think it's improved a little bit. But, uh yeah, I didn't, I didn't know what to expect much, but uh, all these young guys, you know, they, they work their butts off every single day. And uh, you know, a guy like Miles, didn't know him before, and I was really, really pleasantly surprised. Uh, great guy. Uh, he is really, really working hard. I, I, I can't say much else about that. Yeah. And the same thing with Brandon, you know, he's a rookie, but he can, he can hoop. And, you know, if he listens to the older guys, a little bit more. Uh, we, we can help him a little bit with the other stuff. You know, the basketball part is all great. I, I won't get you in trouble with the fan base down there in Charlotte, but <laughs> but you got to admit you were a little pissed <laughs> being, being traded from OKC to Charlotte. What was that adjustment like? Uh, you know, that's that's a the stick with both with, with two ends. You know, and one thing is uh, going to a team from uh, from one that's aspiring to win a championship this season and playing really great. But you know, how far at the end of the bench I was. Uh, the other side is coming here to Charlotte and getting to play basketball, you know. Uh, I don't know, you Lou, not so much probably, but Chandler at one point, you know, with all the injuries, like, you know how it is not to play and just be around the mm -hmm. team and wanting to be on the court. It's, it's, it's really tough, so I'm just happy to play basketball again. And uh, the longer, longer off season. You got to look on the bright side, Davis. No, there it is. Yeah. They're always finding the bright side, Chandler P. Yeah, I see that. Uh, Light at the end of the tunnel. There's <laughs> always something there. All right, right you, re you recently took the shot to the nose there, so now you got the, the face mask, the Batman, all of it all. What is it like playing with that thing on? Do, do you feel it? Do you ignore it? What is it? You know, for the for the shooting part, it's not a full problem, you know. <laughs> you see the hoop easily, but uh, I think the problem is, since I'm not that good of a ball handler, if I got to put it on the floor, if I can't see, like, it just it just feels <laughs> like I can't see nothing below. And, and you know, that's going to help my improve my ball handling, but it's also a little bit tougher for me. I guess, yeah, it's like having blinders on. You can't really see anything. Um, a few nights ago, the, the Hornets broadcasters were discussing your level of toughness. Here they are. Playing with a mask for the first time this season. He got hit in the schnoz on Wednesday against Cleveland. He didn't even realize it because he continued to play. That's how tough he is. Suffer than woodpecker lips, apparently. He is. My goodness. What? Okay. What? <laughs> yeah, let's, let's put a... Lips. By the way, this announcer is a class. Are you he tougher says... than woodpecker lips, Davis? <laughs> what does that mean? Uh, well, I guess uh, woodpecker lips, well, beak, more likely. Yeah. So they just... that's pretty tough, right? 
Yeah. It doesn't really give much stuff than that. I've yeah. never heard that saying. But, but actually, I, I did realize during the game that I probably broke it because it cracked and uh, I felt like a little like something on the side. So I just, I just walked over. Like they, they asked me if I want to go check it in the back. I was like, well, like I can breathe, so it's fine. <laughs> I mean, looking at you, it doesn't look like anything. Yeah. Like at all. Cool. Yeah, like it's a little bit crooked. Like usually it's like, you know, I'm not the best looking guy, but usually I look a little <laughs> bit better. Yeah, I feel like we look great. Davis, a few years ago, we've seen a lot of players. They got upset with uh, Ronnie over there in 2K with about their, uh, <laughs> their, their player rating. Uh, have you ever talked to him about that? And has it since changed now that you're on the floor a little bit more? Or he's still... <laughs> Still, still hate I really couldn't care less, to be honest. <laughs> I, I play FIFA most of the time, so I'm good. Wait, do you guys really care about that? Like Absolutely. That's, that's like So a, you check like it and thing. then complain. Yeah, because somebody's literally telling you you suck sometimes. Someone, by the way, who's never like, played a sport hooped. in his life. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, that's yeah, he's never hooped before, never played, and he's like, Are you like, only a... I'll, a I'll, I'll listen to somebody that comes up to me that says that he made 53s in a row, and then I'll, I'll, right. I'll maybe listen to him. There right. you go. <laughs> Not this. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> wow, okay, no, but shout I out. I ain't going that far. Shout out to Ruddy. Chandler took it to a bad place. Um, talking about My shooting, ranking wasn't the highest it should have been, too. <laughs> Was it not No, good? I'm kidding. I, don't I mean, know. I have no idea what it is. Um, the shooting, you got it. But every once in a while, you'll throw it down, and people seem to still be shocked online when this happens. Uh, even teammates seem to be shocked, which I find to be a little bit insulting. Uh, yeah. <laughs> look at what it doesn't Bruce happen speaking. too often. Look at, look at, what, look at him. <laughs> Why are they still surprised? I mean, is this insulting because to you? Because when you're the stiff old white guy yeah. on the team, they, everyone gets out of their chair when you slap glass on a layup, He's let alone dunk. He's Like, what? Of course he can dunk. Davis, does this bother well, you that what, people are shocked? And is this uh, well, the last says, time you so dunk? Because I'm so in this often, clip. Like, not so much. <laughs> <laughs> is this the last time you dunk the basketball? <laughs> It, no, no, that was, that was like four years. I actually got a dunk this year also. All right, or there two. you go. I was I in that clip. I think I got two of them. Yeah, and do you feel, I mean, Chandler likes to point out. Oh, I remember towards the end of my career when I dunked in Memphis, the, they went nuts. Oh, you would yeah. think the world, like, it's because, you know, I, don't, I didn't do it often anymore, and I've been hurt, and you know what I mean? So people get extremely hyped. I think you should do it like, they get No, no, they get hyped if I dunk on somebody. That's, that's where, where everybody goes yeah. crazy. If I do it by myself, I'm, I'm 16, like, I should be able to do it even, you know, close to retirement. <laughs> Yeah, point. I think people get excited for y'all dunking for a different reason than they were getting excited. It's because we're white. Because it's their white, Lou. Oh, God. Duh. I get to bring up race into everything. Uh, Davis, <laughs> you came into the NBA as an international prospect from Latvia, obviously, and you were drafted in 2011, but you didn't play in the NBA until 2016. Oh, my. So how did that time playing overseas prepare you for when you got to the league? Uh, since I had a really, really great, but uh, he was also very crazy, you know, really well-known coach, uh, Serbian coach Durko Vyoshevic. And uh, those were two seasons where I had to miss 10 months in the middle with the ACL injury, which I got my first full year there uh, in the last game of the final series. And then it was the ACL rehab. But yeah, with that coach, that was what probably prepared me the most for whatever challenges I might have coming along. And uh, you know, six hours, seven hours a day of practice. That's split in two practices usually. And uh, uh, some of those, well, me and uh, Bogdan Bogdanovic, we couldn't leave the gym after the morning shoot rounds until we made 10 in a row coming off screens. And then he would just come up with like some stuff like, you know, wearing gloves, taping the dominant eye shot. Like it was, it was ridiculous. You know, having a, another coach with a broom just contesting extremely high. <laughs> and I think, I think going through all that, uh, with him being, you know, Serbians, they like to cuss and uh, and really, really get into, like, personal oh, insults. Wow. And, and, and all that is, like, at the end of the day, it's like, if, if a coach now in NBA cusses me out, like, you know, I'll take the message, but it just really does not phase me even for a little bit. That's, like, the perfect prep, because then in 2016, you go to the Spurs and pop. So, it's like, could you be better prepared? You get there, you've got international stars, um, Manu, Tony Parker. Did that sort of... I don't know, make the path seem a lot easier as far as having guys from around the world that you could sort of learn from and talk to? Definitely. You know, now, now there's so many international players on every single team. But uh, back then, you know, having San Antonio as a team that's like a nice transition from European basketball to the NBA, uh, it definitely made it much, much easier. And, you know, every single guy that plays an important role, like they come in from kind of 
internationally. You know, Manu played in Europe. Tony grew up there. Uh, then Patty, who's from Australia, you know, you know, he came to college. You know, it's just like a mix of every every part of the world. Uh, it, it made it so much easier just to adjust and uh, and then playing the type of basketball that they played, moving the ball all the time. Uh, everybody gets a touch. Nobody cares who's finishing the play at the end. It, it was a really, really easy transition. Uh, do you have any pop stories that you can share? I mean, I know some of them are not shareable. Uh, <laughs> did he like you? This, uh, I think I think he did. <laughs> for, mo for most part, you know, uh, except for making some bad mistakes on defensive end sometimes, you know. And then you get in a doghouse in, in the first few years and, and, and uh, don't step on the court for a little while after that. But, uh, like, it's, it's just him yelling at every single guy if they mess it up, doesn't matter if it's Tony or it's Manu or if it's me or uh, it, right now it could be a two way. Like, he does not care. Like, he's going to, he wants the team play a certain way. If you don't do it, he's going to keep you responsible regardless if your jersey is going to be in the rafters in like three years after that. I like that. But you probably, you That's respect that. Be, yeah. yeah, as a yeah. player. Not just oh, definitely. I respect yeah. that. And, uh, you know, in, in a way right now, Cliff is the same way. Uh, uh, I kind of love that old school type of coaching, you know, that's that's what I grew up with and and I feel comfortable with that kind of environment where the coach is just holding every single guy responsible the same way. Davis, my last question for you is Adam Silver recently has said that he may go to a format where he goes USA versus the world. And looking at the list of these international players, obviously you're well aware, Jokic, Donkic, SGA, Giannis, Joel, Wimby, although we got Joel this on uh, Team yeah, USA. Yeah. Um, who, who, how cool would that be? Who wins that game? Would you be stoked to possibly play in that game? Uh, I think there's a little bit better players than me <laughs> to, to make that world team. I uh, would love to, of course, but uh, I don't know. If, if that was the All-Star game format, I think uh, everybody would try a little bit harder to win just to be able to talk a lot of smack, you know, and, and I feel that would make it really competitive. I hate it, by the way. I'm but, all for way, that. No, look, Anything other than what they're doing now. He just for the made the game. argument even more for us to have this happen. Quite possibly, but you also it's also international players that don't care about the All Star Game as well as the USA players. And no, I, world I just dominance. think it's I think it's divisive. Basketball has brought so many people together. <laughs> Save that for the Olympics, not inside <laughs> of the NBA. That's my opinion. He's being soft, Davis. I'm so sorry about that. I'm a soft guy. We, everything's I'm divisive. Sensitive. We appreciate the time. Uh, go read a bunch of books behind you. Uh, <laughs> exactly. I'll start from that side. Yeah, yeah, just start over there and go down. <laughs> Thank you. Um, we'll take a quick appreciate break it. when we come back. Oh, it's golf time. Hey. Oh, it's happening. Will Zalatoris joins the show. Hype. Chandler's going to hijack the whole interview when we'll Run It Back returns. Run it back, run it back. Run it up. They run it back, yeah, yeah. Run it up, run it back like a... I mean, I feel like I could just read off the list of accomplishments of our next guest here, and I can feel the excitement just emanating from my friend Chandler P. here, because joining us now, he's a man who's done the Masters, he's done the PGA Championship, he's done the U.S. Open, he's finished second at all those. He's joining us now from Dallas. Will Zalatoris is on the show, and um, I thought you were going to stand up and show him your swing and be like, what's what ah, we'll wrong? get to that. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll ease <laughs> into that. <laughs> uh, I want to ask you, we're going to talk golf, obviously, here in a second, but hoops first. You're from the Bay Area. You're a Warriors fan. Uh, we talk so much about do they have anything left to make one more run at a championship. You're a fan of this team. Do you see it? I mean, I hope so. I mean, they've uh, they've given us spurts of, like, hope throughout the year. I mean, it's kind of fun whenever I'm on the road. I'm always watching the guys and um, – you know, we'll see, but I mean, it's going to be a grind. It's not an easy schedule coming up either. So two two games against Dallas is not 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 ideal. Yeah, if they don't get it this year, does it feel? I don't know. As a fan, does it feel like that dynasty is? Over? Clock is ticking. Yeah, is it is it going? Yeah, on? I mean, it's um, it's now or never. I mean, right. it's great adding CP3, especially you know being a Wake Forest guy. Selfishly, it's it's a lot of fun, but um, it's now or never. Well, what is the, and I'm terrified to ask this because the little, <laughs> little tidbit well you. you gave me during the now. commercial break. <laughs> what is the best Warriors game you have ever attended? Oh, dear. So you may or may not have been on the floor. Um, <laughs> it was against Dallas. Okay. Um, 
It was a game that I think was like right around Christmas, <laughs> and Steph and Clay went off for forty each. <laughs> oh my! And it was it was disgusting. Yeah. But I mean, I sat I sat behind the bench, and maybe one of the funniest things about it though is watching Clay's mannerisms, because he's like him shooting threes is just like a tick. Like he's literally just like sitting on the bench, like. You know, Steve Kerr could be drawing up a play or something like that. And he's just sitting there just looking at the basket, just like <laughs> nonstop like this. And it's just like the most clay thing ever. Yeah. I mean, it's so funny. There's a good chance if they got hot, it was probably on. It's because I was guarding them. I got them kickstarted <laughs> there. But uh, you're, you're, usually pretty, was gross. you're usually pretty busy during the NBA playoffs. But did you get to see most of their finals run? Yeah, I did. I mean, you know, I, I don't miss a game. Um, you know, my dad and Bob Fitzgerald, who's in our announcers, been, they've been friends for 30 plus years. They're actually playing golf on Friday together. Um, so I'm always, you know, in the middle of the broadcast, I'm, I'm like, you know, while I was out, especially, I was always like, you know, texting him and being like, you know, come on, man, we got to get this together and, you know, kind of venting at each other through the breaks. But, um, it's been a lot of fun. It's been a great run. I mean, I remember, you know, especially, you know, for me, it's been going on since um, I was in high school. So it's been it's been a really, really cool run. Yeah, growing up in the Bay Area, I mean, we talked about this yesterday. One of the rookies on Charlotte, he said his goat was Paul George, which obviously I don't think that means he thinks he's the best player ever. But yeah. is Steph your goat, just considering everything you've seen from when you watched, and, and, you know, everything you've seen him do in person? Yeah, I mean, like, when it comes to just not even just basketball, like sport in general, like someone who has literally transformed the game, um, it's kind of hard not to, for me not to say he's a goat. I mean, you know, for my dad, like he's from Chicago. Like if I said that in front of him, he'd be like, how dare you not say it's MJ? And I'm like, hey, different areas, you know, different areas, whatever. But like, you know, Steph can shoot. And it's just, it's it's been really, really fun to watch, you know, since he was, I mean, it's been a while. So I even remember when he was coming off the bench, uh, going to games and yep. being like, man, this kid is, this kid that. is like, like, you know, like just randomly popping off, like, you know, seven out of, you know, seven, seven out of nine shooting threes, <laughs> you know, just crazy stuff. Yeah. He's Sorry. Crazy. I got a puppy while I was out. And <laughs> I know. Let me see the puppy. Just, <laughs> she she just ran away? away. Of course. Oh yeah. But she'll come back. No, but. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Oh, oh, no, don't apologize. Never apologize for a dog. Um, so you sank a key putt, 22 St. Jude Championship, uh, and you shouted, mm -hmm. what are they going to say now? Which is a Steph throwback, by the way. Uh, have you found yourself being inspired by him in some way when you're playing golf? Yeah, I mean, especially, like, because of the ankle injuries that he's gone through and, like, me with my back and – him always kind of like being, you know, you're too small, you got bad ankles, like, and I think for me, like, it's always kind of been like, you know, I, you, you hit it really good. You're going to make any putts, you know, you're going to do this, you're going to do that. You always finish second. And I'm just, just kind of like, Hey, what, you know, I'm coming after you now. And so, um, you know, from back after the back surgery, I mean, he's been a huge inspiration of mine. So, you know, especially all the ankle injuries and then, you know, literally being one of the great, I mean, the greatest shooter of all time after everything that he went through. Well, what I've learned is a somewhat new golfers. There's so many different levels to this. I know our boy, Kevin Doherty, he's going through the corn ferry process. He gets his card and he, like, I like Steph Curry, Tony Romo, they're scratch golfers, but you would bust their ass. How many strokes have you played with him before? And how many strokes would you have to give him? to actually make it even because scratch is different than a plus six or whatever you are. Yeah. Literally. Yeah. I mean, that's so <laughs> I give Tony six. Oh. Um, we play a lot. I mean, between Scotty Scheffler, Jordan Spieth, Kelly Craft, me, we play with Tony quite a bit. Um, and it's the most annoying six you've ever like had to play against because it's like he'll pop off five birdies, but then I'll make like four doubles mm. and he could be birdieing his pop holes and you just have no chance. But like he also like playing with Tony is hysterical because he just literally like he will hit it everywhere. And then all of a sudden I'll make like a 30 footer and he just want to like, it's just so annoying. That's like it, it's, that. it's really funny. Cause we could be, we could be playing like a five man wolf game mm. and like, if he makes a putt and you're on his team, like no one's happy. Like, yeah, but it's you really love fun. it if you're on it's his really, team. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but even like we have a side game going against each other, and it's like if he makes a putt, everyone's like, oh, whatever. Like, yeah. Come on. That's awesome. Tony. So, 
Will, are but, you? Are, I know you're familiar with some of the NBA golfers outside of Steph. Mm-hmm. So forget who's the who's the best. Who's the worst <laughs> golfer in the NBA, in your opinion? <laughs> well, I mean, Barkley obviously takes <laughs> the given. cake. I mean, I know he's not even. I know he's retired, but like, I he saw fixed, him actually. He fixed the yips, though. Will he doesn't do the? He did. He so I actually. He had to do like a commercial with Tony and he came down to Dallas and was hitting golf balls. And I was really impressed. Like it was really good. But that being said, like driving range is a hundred yards wide and there were still probably about 30 golf balls that like were either on the train tracks or in the parking lot. So like good Lord. it's better, but it's not good. I say this all the time. I think LeBron James is one of the most, if not the most athletic person in the world, but you give him like an eight iron and he just loses all he did. Has look, he played? Has he, have you, I've seen him like his little oh. swing and it is top golf. Yeah. Yeah, you can it's either brutal. swing or you can't. I'm That's a top my thing. Go- I'm a top golfer. It's I'm a hard. natural born golfer. So it's, but I feel like if you're one relate. of the most athletic people in the world, you should be able to figure out how to say I know I don't I, well let's ask Will because I don't know that they correlate there's a different kind of coordination right to hit a golf ball it's, it's different yeah I mean it's like it's kind of like how baseball players like whenever you see them like making like swings outside the box how they have this like crazy lag like golf people think you know especially like you're talking about LeBron how he's just kind of got this like you know one arm you know just like keeps the club in front of his body type thing like there's a lot of like lag that gets created in the golf swing. And so I think it's just different because it's like, especially like golf, you're, you're to the side, whereas in basketball, you're like facing forward and you're like kind of, it's just, it's just different. But like that being said, that being said, I'm, I, it's the only thing I got on LeBron. So that's, that's all (laughs) I got. So just keep it and run with it. By the way, we, we want to show you a little clip here of our best friend Chandler Parsons, who spends a lot of time on golf courses. Here he is in Cabo, living his best life. Mix in some sunscreen. I don't love nice. I don't love yeah, no kidding. So, well, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a dangerous 10 11 index. I can go real low, I can also go real high. So, we, that's you, a said, good partner. you said, yeah, the five man wolf game. That's, I'm playing that today at Sherwood. Oh, we go sure. five man wolf, stroke off the low. And we we hammer we, we hammer you through the hole. Yeah. 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 <laughs> we hammer through the hole. But yeah, I'm all over the place still. Sometimes <laughs> I've played in some pro am, some tournaments. I'm gonna play in some more. But dude, it saved my life. I'm obsessed with golf. I do it three times a week. So three, and three. That's good. You got a good move. You got a really good move. I mean, but can he put we got to get you. Like for the love of God, it's a it's a gentleman. That was at Chileno Bay. Have you ever played in these discovery courses? Well, where it's just just oh yeah, it's chaos. Oh yeah, he's played everywhere. Uh, yeah. We, uh, a lot of golfers have places over there, but it's, yeah, yeah. you got a good move. We got to yeah. work on the timing a little bit. We got to, yeah. we got to, it's a, it's a good start. It does look wonky. I'll points. take it. Yeah, I, I agree with him on that. Um, you got, you got good people congratulating you when wonderful things happen. And I want to talk Adam Sandler here for a second, um, <laughs> because there's the resemblance to the caddy from Happy Gilmore, yeah. which is vital and important. But also <laughs> we now know that, uh, we're getting a Happy Gilmore too. It's officially official. Could you be in that? You Where gotta, are we on the acting? You got to do it. So I'm getting a haircut tomorrow, and I've told <laughs> my girl that I'm like, this is our last haircut for a while. I am i don't know if I'm going to be a part of it, but I'm I'm going to be ready. Yes. So hair, hair's growing out. Wife is okay with it. <laughs> we're, so it's, it's, it's going. It, we're no, yeah, no haircut for a long time. Hoping that, uh, hoping I get the call. I mean, how could they it's not come calling? That is ridiculous. <laughs> that's epic. He's that's like ridiculous. the part that's funny is that the the actor in real life is like he's like a psychiatrist or something now. Like he's like he's a real got person. his PhD. Oh, wow. Yeah, like yeah, but it's he like reached out to me and said like congrats and all that. It was hysterical. It's like doctor. <laughs> yeah, it's great. All right, you're gonna be in it. That's it's gonna awesome. happen. Manifest. I hope so. I hope so. Lou, you're up here. Oh, are you taking over the interview again, Chandler? Oh, I thought it was Lou's up. <laughs> oh, go ahead, Lou. <laughs> I want to. I want to <laughs> ask uh, your your Wake Forest alumni. Do you uh, mm-hmm. in the tournament? Did you root for other ACC schools, or were you excited oh. that Duke and UNC went out? <laughs> um, my hatred for Duke is pretty rich. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. It makes two of us. Um, it's all good. Three yeah, of us. Three I mean, of us. All of us. <laughs> all of us. There we go. Basically, if you didn't go to Duke, you think they're all the shitheads. Kind of yes. <laughs> it's kind of funny because, like, like I'm a Giants fan, or San Francisco Giants fan. Like, I hate the Dodgers. Like, I, 
don't really care about the Padres, even though technically it's a rivalry. Like UNC, like I'm kind of like, yeah, you're. I'm not rooting for y'all ever, but I played golf with Roy Williams once. He's an unbelievably awesome guy, super funny, really good golfer actually. But like, I just can't root for Duke, like in anything. Nice. Like it's just, it's like the bane in my existence. That's smart. So that's smart. I, I mean, feel you. only evil people root for Duke if they didn't even go there. Like, it doesn't even make sense. Do you even go here? Uh, Masters tee off, and it's the happiest time for every grown man that I know. It's like Christmas all over again. So you got two weeks. You've had success there, run up 21, tied for 622. And then last year, the back injury. So most importantly, how are you feeling? I feel awesome. You know, I, uh, I had a really good team of docs. I had the same doctors that uh, Tiger went to. Um, you know, it's been a... It's been a long journey. It's been about eight months of, you know, really grinding on the rehab, but I feel really good. And, uh, you know, it'll be pretty special when I get back there. And, um, you know, I blew out my back on the driving range literally 30 minutes before my tee time, oh. um, which is like the biggest like nightmare ever. And, um, you know, I honestly, like, it's just going to be really special going back there, especially for, you know, me and my wife, because it was, uh, mm -hmm. You know, it was a, a fun time to be able to do the par three together for the first time. And then the next day, you know, I'm out for the rest of the year. So, um, you know, I've, I've got some I got a chip on my shoulder this year, too. Um, you know, I know it's kind of fun talking about all the second places and majors, but I, I stare at all my second place trophies, you know, right before I head out the door every day. So I'm tired of looking at silver. I like that. But Girl. That's the attitude you want to have. By the way, is there a world in which a caddy last minute is ill or can't can't work that weekend? Would you consider Chandler? <laughs> I'll throw my bag yeah, out I mean, the first no. hole and carry your bag. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got a lot of stuff in there. Like whenever I take it out, take it out of the travel case after the end of the week, I'm like, golly, my caddy, he, he doesn't get paid enough. You know, like the fifth time I ever played was at Cypress, and there was no carts. It was freezing, That's and the like no caddy, and yeah. I had to carry my. And I was like, golf sucks. I'm Did you like, hear that? <laughs> I'm like, this is not discovery. This is not for me. <laughs> I'm out on the caddy. Privilege. I'm also dyslexic on the greens, too. I'm five strokes better with a caddy than without a caddy. So I am useless for you in that category. It might be the tequila down at Chileno. That, might be also, that, 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 that plays a big part. Look, outside of Top Golf, I've never touched a golf club in my life. I've, I've just never caught the bug a lot of my brothers have. If I worked with you, how long would it take me to be better than this guy? <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, it depends. I think if we get a few cocktails in us, I could get you going pretty <laughs> quick. Go. But I think if uh, if we're out there grinding, I mean, that's the thing. It's just like every time I try to help an athlete, like it doesn't matter if it's Tony or like, <laughs> you know, like a couple guys that are baseball players that work out at the same gym that I'm at. And like we start talking golf swing. It's like the obsession of like, I have to be better right now. And it's so frustrating because golf is like, it's like, yeah, it's like you can't perfect it. <laughs> you're going to hit bad shots that are going to end up really good, and you're going to hit really good shots that are going to end up bad. And, like, it's not – there's not a straight correlation to, like, success. And so, like – You might be a natural. That I think one good one you might be a natural. Keep you coming back. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's it just takes, like, the one good shot or, like, the one good round. And it's, like, I always love where it's, like, people talk about how they're so excited to get to the first tee, and then they're, like, the 17 holes are, like – Oh, I hate goodness. this. Why am I doing this? <laughs> this is so stupid. And then they hit one good shot on 18. And they're like, We're I back. can't wait to come back. We're back. Tomorrow. It's, it's amazing. Like, uh, Will, good luck this season. We'll all be watching. Uh, you love the Masters, yeah? Love it. Good luck. All right. Good luck. Thanks, man. Yeah, I enjoyed yes, it. Thanks, y'all. We'll be back. Run it back. Run it back. Run it all. Run it back. Run it all. Run it back. Run it all. Run it back. My goal is to get all of us on a golf course before it's all said and done. Tomorrow, we got Ryan Rossillo. Ah, old friend. Haven't seen that dude in a minute, so we're going to have him on tomorrow. We got hoops tonight. Gentlemen, enjoy your evening. <laughs> you do the same. Start your engines. And I don't know why I'm holding my laptop. I don't either. <laughs> run it back, yeah. Run it up. Then run it back. Run it back. Run it up. Run it back. Yeah. Run it up.